So I just want to do an update that we have some uh, issue here that we have to uh, change the itinerary. So uh, Phil has been sick since uh, actually since the Sichuan has been off and on with the fever. So we bought the ticket tomorrow morning. We're heading back to Beijing and. Um, see if he can get some rest and get better than fly back to Ottawa. I don't know what's our plan next. I hope we can still visit some region. Our original plan was after Phil leave from Shangri-La, my mom and I were going to continue to Tibet and loop back to Ya'an in Sichuan province. Because of Phil's health issue, we had to return to Beijing so that he can get some rest before leave to Ottawa. To make the most of the rest of my time in China, my mom and I decided to go to Lhasa directly from Beijing by train, then make our way back. We had a brief trip to the foot of Everest and a short stay at Yigong Tea Farm. Though the whole trip was much shorter than we planned, it was still the most unforgettable experience I had. It takes about 40 hours from Beijing to Lhasa by train. Despite the long ride, there are many advantages to traveling to Tibet by train. As a high-altitude newbie, I had a chance to acclimatize compared to flying in. Once the train reaches a certain elevation, the oxygen outlets start to supply oxygen for those who need it. I've never seen that before. I actually don't feel anything. I guess there's oxygen. I always get out of the train whenever it stops to help my body adjust to the altitude. Of course, I always enjoy the views as the trim goes, and the excitement slowly build up as we approach Lhasa. Lhasa's sun reminded me of Canada, strong, bright, and penetrating. Sunscreen is definitely recommended. The high elevation didn't affect me much. The minor symptom is that I feel hungry easily. We found a place for lunch, Sichuan-style skewers. Yes, there are many Han-style restaurants, and most of them are Sichuan food. The hotel we stayed was centrally located, walking distance to the Patala Palace, Jokam Monastery, and Ramosh Temple. It's a totally different vibe in the hotel compared to the busy street outside. It's peaceful and quiet, with birds chirping. The hotel has a big courtyard in the middle, making it a great space for hanging out. The clear roof keeps out the cold, while providing abundant sunlight. A very unique hotel layout I've never seen before. Not to mention the Tibetan style decor is gorgeous. Now we're heading to a tea house. I'm not quite sure what kind of tea house it will be. I got some milk tea. Tea is something crucial to Tibetans. And for many of them, hanging out in the tea house is a part of their daily life. There is a tea house every couple of steps. No exaggeration. People get together in the tea house, have tea, and chit chat. There are usually simple food served as well. Doesn't it sound like a Starbucks? Uh. Right, sounds like. So we order uh, some um, the milk tea. They call that sweet tea. So basically, it's just like a milk tea. It's a one yuan for a cup. You just grab the uh, cup and uh, this. Uh, the server will come by and uh, fill it up. Pretty, pretty interesting. And uh, feels like a. I couldn't find words to describe the feeling at the moment, but now as I watch the clip over and over while editing, I realize it was like uh, traveling through time. It reminded me of when I was young. The inside of the tea house looked like houses from the early 90s, full of people, chaotic, but somehow they're organized in their own way. A very 90s scene. I didn't understand the surroundings back then because I was too young. I still didn't understand what's going on in the tea house because I don't speak their language. A totally delayed deja vu. So 
So this is the uh, Nuno way order that I forgot to take the video or uh, picture before I stir it. So basically, I think they use something spicy too. With a little bit of beef here. Yeah, I don't know if it's their the special grain. The tea house we visited is famous among travelers, but still stays quite authentic. Honestly, I didn't like the food at all, but the sweet tea is pretty good, similar to bubble tea but without bubbles. Overall, I did enjoy the unique experience there. We took the long way back to the hotel, passing Joka Monastery and Barkwar Street. The seams were amazing. The signature Tibetan buildings, little shops selling all kinds of stuff, the religious people bowing and walking, seemingly oblivious to the hustle and bustle around them. There is an interesting balance between busy and peaceful. We also picked up something interesting. This is a uh, yak milk, no, yak yogurt. I heard it's really tart. Gonna try this out. You can see the top already has some like a like a skin or something that underneath is white. Just tastes like yogurt. Mm. Pretty good. If you ever visit Lhasa, there is a place you must go. The Patala Palace. It's mind blowing. The inside doesn't allow photography, like many places in Tibet, due to religious reason. The huge sculptures of a Buddha and historical figures, the countless priceless treasures, the magnificent architecture. Everything is beyond words. Plus, the stairs literally made me breathless. I think the whole trip would be even better if I had known more about Tibetan history and religion. After the short stay in Lhasa, we headed out to somewhere even higher, the base camp of Mount Everest.